Hello and welcome to our flip learning task for OCR GCSE Psychology. This is the first study that we need to look at for our psychological problems section. So far in lesson we've looked at two theories of schizophrenia, we've looked at the social drift theory and we've looked at biological causes of schizophrenia. This study investigates those biological causes. Because it's biological, there's an awful lot of key terms and concepts that you need to get your head around. So don't worry if you need to watch through the video a few times before you get the hang of all those key terms. It's really important that you understand it. Now in the textbook, this is quite a complicated study. There's an awful lot of information. So I've tried to simplify the study down as much as I possibly can. If you want to try and read the in-depth study, then by, ahead, by, by all means go ahead and do that. But have a look through this PowerPoint first so you can get the hang of all the basics. So this is Daniel Weinberger Jones et al. 1991. So it's a fairly recent study. And it's a study into the effect of amphetamines on regional cerebral blood flow during cognitive activation in schizophrenia. So in a nutshell, what we're looking at is the effect the amphetamine drugs have on the blood flow in the brain when we're asking schizophrenic patients to do thinking tasks. Okay, so let's have a look at the previous research that's led to this study. So, so far we've looked at those biological uh, possible causes for schizophrenia. There's been lots of research that looks at the brain activity for people who have schizophrenia. And what's been noticed is that there has been a reduced level of activity in that prefrontal cortex. So this is the part of the brain that's at the front in your forehead region. That level of activity or that low level of activity has also been linked to the neurotransmitter dopamine. And we've talked about dopamine and what it does and what the neurotransmitters do and how they send those messages around the brain. Dopamine in particular helps to suppress random brain activity, helps you to focus on tasks. Now, the suggestion is that this is lacking in schizophrenic patients and this can lead to them not being able to focus and perhaps that's where things like the hallucinations might come from. So the hypothesis for Daniel and Co's study is that if we can have a look at that prefrontal cortex, if there isn't enough dopamine sending messages around that prefrontal cortex, then that might be having an impact on the schizophrenic symptoms. So if we increase that activity and we do something to, to put more dopamine in the prefrontal cortex, we should also, by, by process of elimination, see more activity in the prefrontal cortex. So one should lead to the other. How are we going to do that? OK, so this is where some of these key terms come in. We're going to increase the dopamine by giving the patients amphetamines. So they are a class of drug that increase the dopamine levels in the brain. We're going to see if it helps with the cognitive tasks, the cognitive function, by giving them tasks to do that require cognitive processing, so problem-solving skills. We're going to measure the activity in the brain using a SPECT scan. So single photon emission computer tomography, and it's a nuclear imaging test that looks at the blood flow around the brain. So if there is lots of cognitive activity, what we should see is lots of activity in the prefrontal cortex, because we know that's where the, the area of the brain that does the cognitive processing. OK, so in terms of method, then, it's a double blind lab experiment. So it's a lab experiment because we're going to control what happens in both groups. We're going to control the variables as much as we can. We've got control over the IV in both conditions. It's a repeated measures because we're going to get the same participants to take part in both conditions. And then we're going to compare the results from condition one and condition two. It's a double blind because we're not going to tell the participants which condition they are in. And we're also not going to tell the person administering the task which condition they're in. And this way it stops any bias coming from either the patients thinking that they've had a drug or they haven't had a drug. And also from the, the person administering the test, the researcher is not going to give away any clues as to whether they know whether the patients have the drug or not. So our IV, our independent variable, is whether the person has had amphetamines or no, amphet no amphetamines. 
And the dependent variable, the thing that's going to change depending on that, whether they've taken that dog or not, is their score on this wins constant card sorting task. And we'll go through a little bit about what that is. The sample of patients. We've got 10 patients from a mental health institute in Washington in America. OK, they're inpatients, so they live in there. They stay in there all the time. And each patient is diagnosed with chronic schizophrenia. So this impacts on their day to day ability to live a normal functioning life. But they have been stabilised and they've been given a, a drug called haloperidol to stabilise their symptoms. So we shouldn't see any symptoms of schizophrenia, hopefully, um, in their in their behaviour. Um, but they do have it as an underlying condition. OK, the pre procedure that they've taken then when carrying out this study. Each participant was tested between two to four days apart. So don't forget they're doing both conditions. In one condition, they're going to take an amphetamine and in the other condition, they're not going to take an amphetamine. Now, they've done what's called counterbalancing. So some of the participants will, will have their amphetamine condition first and then their non-amphetamine condition second. Other patients will be the other way around. And it's so that we're not confusing any order effects that might have an impact on the results. So five were given a bar task first and five were given the card sorting task first. Now, the bar task is just a simple task of matching bars on a screen to make sure uh, they can identify which orientation. So they'll be showing two bars and they have to say which one matches and which one doesn't. It's a real simple task. Not really interested so much in the results of that one, but it does give us a control measure to compare the card task to. Each participant was given the amphetamine or a placebo. So before every test, test, task, they've taken a drug, but the participant doesn't know whether it's an amphetamine or a placebo. Now, it's really important that you understand what a placebo is. It's a fake drug that's designed to have no effect at all but it can be tested against the real drug. Now, the placebo effect can sometimes change behaviour because it makes participants think they've had a drug and that sometimes is enough to change behaviour. So it's important that we put that in to measure whether it's really the amphetamine that's having an impact or whether it is the um, participant's own viewpoint. So while they're carrying out this task, whether it's the bar task or the Wisconsin card sort task, they are also undergoing a brain scan. So can you imagine they are sat comfortably in a reclined chair? They have a brain scanner over the top of their head and there's rubber inserts just holding their head still so we can get an accurate measure, an accurate scan of their brain while they're performing these tasks. So this is what the Wisconsin card sort task is. Um, you can see the cards at the top, one, two, three and four. Uh, they are varying in three different things. They're varying in colour, they're varying in number, and they're varying in shape. Okay. The participants are given a card at the bottom. So in this case, in this picture, it's the one with the two red crosses. They have to try and figure out what the matching rule is. So they could match it to card number one because it's the same colour. They could match it to card number two because it has two items on. Or they could match it to card number four because it has crosses on. Now, they don't know at the start what the rule is. So the first couple of goes might be trial and error of matching that to one of the four cards above to see what the match might be. Once they figured out the rule, they continue matching. Now, at some point, the rule will change and they will get a, a bleeping noise to tell them that they've, they've made the wrong choice. They then have to start again and figure out what the rule is. So it's not a complicated task, but it will take them some cognitive processing to figure out those rules. So the results that Daniel and Co found then. There was no difference in the two groups completing the bar test. So the amphetamine had no uh, effect at all on how you could complete that test. That's not a surprise. That's not really what we're looking for. That's our control measure. Now, when the groups were taking amphetamine, there was some areas of the prefrontal cortex that showed more activity during the card sort test. What they also found is that amphetamine group did better on the card sort task. 
Now, what was interesting is they did better on the task, but there didn't appear to be more cognitive function. The conclusion that they came to is that even though the amphetamine seemed to reduce the blood flow to the brain in some areas, it still increased the performance on the cognitive task. So it does support the previous research that found that dopamine is important because when we put more dopamine into the brain of schizophrenics, they can function better on those cognitive tasks. It also suggests that there are some problems associated with schizophrenia and the prefrontal cortex may be able to be treated with drugs in the future, which is a really important step forward because it then obviously gives the possibility of dopamine type treatments to increase that cognitive function. OK, so the key concepts you need to make sure that you know about are the idea of dopamine. You need to be able to describe what it is. You need to be sure you understand what the prefrontal cortex is. You need to be able to say what an amphetamine is. Describe a double blind procedure and a placebo. Be aware of what a SPECT scan is, even if you can't remember what it all stands for. And you need to be able to describe what the card sort task is. So can you please make sure you can do all of those for next lesson? Thank you. Bye-bye.